Good morning. Today's devotional is called The Friendship Stew. In an article entitled Enjoying the Enduring Magic of Long-Term Friendship, author Catherine Lowry lists several important ingredients found in friendships that are able to last for many years. Ingredient number one, going through hard times together. The people she surveyed had been through depressions, wars, illnesses, death of spouses and parents together. Hard times are the cement where true friendships are solidified. Paul the Apostle touches on some of the experiences that create friendship in the book of Romans, chapter 12, verses 10 to 15. He says, be devoted to one another in brotherly love. Give preference to one another in honor not lagging behind in diligence, fervent in spirit, serving the Lord, rejoicing in hope, persevering in tribulation, devoted to prayer, contributing to the needs of the saints, practicing hospitality. Bless those who persecute you. Bless and do not curse. Rejoice with those who rejoice and weep with those who weep. I want you to notice verse 10 devotion and praise offered to each other. And verse 15, sharing the good and bad times. He also says in Galatians 6 verse 2, bear one another's burdens and thereby fulfill the law of Christ. So we see that friendship finds its feet in swirling waters and long-term friendships are forged in tribulation. A second ingredient in this friendship stew sharing food and hospitality together. Again, Paul says, contributing to the needs of the saints, practicing hospitality. That's back in chapter 12 of Romans, verse 13. Now, Ms. Lowry also found that friendships are not created in a vacuum. People who had maintained long-term friendships worked at being together often around the dinner table in each other's homes. The sharing of food together often is a major ingredient in the creating of a lifetime bond of friendship. It is difficult to create friendship without this practice. And note that when we disfellowship someone in the church, it is the very first thing that we do to sever ties. 1 Corinthians 5.11 refers to this when it says, not even to eat with such a one, meaning a person who's been disfellowshipped. A third important ingredient is forgiving each other. Paul in Ephesians 4.32 teaches the following. Be kind to one another, tenderhearted, forgiving each other, just as God in Christ has also forgiven you. No matter how great the relationship begins, there will always be a moment when you fail your friend or your friend will disappoint or offend you. What destroys the friendship at this point is not the offense or the failure, but rather the inability or unwillingness to forgive each other. For friendships to last a lifetime, each person should be realistic and expect failures and disappointments in the relationship and be willing and ready to offer forgiveness. I have found that friendship grows stronger and deeper and more precious every time the cycle of forgiveness and reconciliation is experienced. My best friends are those I have forgiven or who have forgiven me even a couple of times. I have found this especially to be so in my relationship with Jesus Christ. Jesus is a friend who not only stands by me in troubled times, constantly nourishes me through his spirit and word, but also draws me closer and closer to him in loving friendship every time he forgives my many sins and is always present when I worship. I pray that you will find and nourish the kind of friendships that we've talked about today. And in so doing, you'll have a blessed week. Discussion questions. Number one, who is your best friend and why? Question number two, describe one thing this person has done or said which has cemented your friendship. Question number three, think of a person you once had a friendship with, but no longer do, and explain. What broke the friendship 
and what would be necessary to renew that friendship. 